Hello everyone, my name is Przemek and this is part of uh, Sunscrapers Tech Talks. Uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, code reviews. Um, the presentation title is uh, Friendly Code Review because uh, I will uh, try to highlight why uh, friendly code review matters. First of all, let's, let's uh, define what is code review. Uh, code review is a systematic examination of a source code uh, by other developer uh, and it is intended to find mistakes overlooked or uh, other uh, bugs in, uh, in the code um, and uh, there are many ways of doing code reviews uh, I uh, pointed out here three uh, first of all we can say there is a post factum code review so uh, for example, when we check and, and review the code when it already lands in the master branch. Uh, this is not probably the recommended way of doing code review because uh, as a reviewer you don't have a, um, influence on uh, what uh, lands in the master branch and sometimes if uh, uh, some bugs are introduced to the code then uh, even if you make some comments about it then probably nobody will pick it up. So this is why this, uh, this way of code review is not rec uh, recommended. And the other way, very popular way, is uh, uh, by doing pull requests or uh, merge requests, uh, depending on, uh, on the software you use. Um, and uh, this works uh, in a way that uh, one developer submits uh, uh, changes, uh, let's say, uh, uh, patch to, uh, to the master, bran master branch and uh, other developer uh, has a chance to look at it, verify it, check it before uh, merging to master branch so uh, we have, uh, we have a decision as a reviewer if it should be merged or not and uh, if any actions uh, should be applied before merging it and uh, this is a very uh, good way of uh, enforcing some changes because otherwise uh, mm, like in the pre previous uh, option post factum code review uh, wh where we didn't have any uh, option to enforce some changes here uh, if we just say that uh, something miss is missing and we just don't uh, merge this pull request that uh, it is more probable that uh, uh, submitter of for example, or other person, other developer, uh, we will act and apply uh, changes that are needed. So this is why it's very popular and uh, very suitable in, in many, uh, let's say, workflows. And the uh, other way uh, of doing code review, which is not, uh, let's say, uh, always uh, mm, correlated with uh, the name which is pre-programming, but to be honest, uh, pre-programming uh, uh, and code review uh, are very, uh, let's say, um, similar under uh, many angles. And uh, this is because if we are doing pre-programming, then, uh, for example, if I, uh, a developer is sitting in the front of computer and uh, typing some code uh, uh, on the keyboard, then other developers sitting next to me uh, is actually doing code review because uh, uh, this developer is looking off on, on the code that I uh, uh, I'm creating and uh, uh, because the other devel because this uh, developer who looks uh, uh, at the code um, is not uh, disturbed about thinking about syntax and things like that uh, such developer has a uh, ov bigger overview and uh, have a time to think uh, of uh, the solution of the problem that is being solved and uh, mm, this is why it is uh, also let's say a code review but not asynchronous it's more like uh, uh, synchronous because it, mm, the attention of both developers is needed in the same time and probably because of that, uh, pre-programming is not very popular and working on pull requests is much uh, more uh, convenient for many workflows because it is asynchronous. And uh, uh, thanks to that, some developers, for example, senior developers that have uh, better 
codes, uh, code skills or coding skills or uh, project knowledge uh, don't have to spend time uh, with everyone. They can do some code reviews in a in a blog, for example, uh, or uh, at the time that uh, they have finished their own work. Yeah, so uh, that's all about uh, those three options that I uh, pointed out. Uh, later in this talk I will focus uh, mostly on a pull request way, because uh, as I mentioned it's the most popular. Uh, some gains I, uh, gains I already mentioned uh, uh, that, that code review uh, gives. Um, first of all, uh, which, is, which um, indirectly I mentioned, uh, is coding skills uh, uh, exchange. Uh, yeah, because if we uh, uh, let's put it in a different way, uh, code reviews and working on pull requests uh, by comments and things like that is a great communication channel between developers. On a, like given on example, real code, and thanks to that, if we discuss about the code, then we exchange coding skills, we exchange uh, project knowledge, which is very important, and this implies that uh, code ownerships, ownership becomes collective uh, instead of individual, so um, that's uh, very important, especially when we are working on uh, um, bigger projects uh, for a longer time. And, uh, yeah, uh, as we uh, defined at the very beginning what is code review. We mentioned that uh, it is intended to uh, find, catch bugs and, and uh, improve uh, the code itself, so it improves quality in general. Mm, and what's more, and this is a very good, uh, let's, say, let's say, advantage of a code review, uh, that, uh, mm, let's say, newcomers to the project or junior developers can uh, uh, be introduced quicker and they can uh, contribute faster because uh, they have their comfort zone because because of the fact that uh, nothing is uh, being uh, merged to master or committed to master uh, immediately um, they can feel safer they can feel more comfortable uh, and for example yeah we had some time Mm, in one of our uh, biggest projects, uh, uh, a post factum code review, and because of that, many developers in that project uh, were afraid to commit mm, at all, and sometimes uh, uh, they tried to uh, work on a commit or on a solution for a given issue for a long time without sharing this code uh, in a remote repository and that was a very bad sign because uh, uh, nobody can help in this, in, this, uh, uh, in this way. And thanks to uh, pull requests and, and code review we can share, exchange code faster and by the way it becomes comfort zone for ourselves as uh, developers. And uh, yeah, we also always have a way to verify uh, what have been created. Uh, especially, uh, we can have a while to go back to uh, client requirements or feature requirements and check if there is uh, any logical mistake or not, or everything is okay. So. Uh, how to do efficient code review? This is, uh, mm, I think, uh, very important uh, uh, because even if we do code reviews, it's uh, not automatically uh, done in a very good way because we can always skip uh, uh, many mm, many things by accident. So, uh, yeah, we already said that we should use pull requests uh, and. Uh, we mentioned that every, well, everyone can do that, but to be honest, that's uh, recommended that everyone should do that because uh, mm, if one person in a team is not doing uh, code reviews, for example, then uh, this person uh, uh, becomes, let's say, a weaker team member because uh, his or her knowledge is uh, not good as other developers about the project and, and things like that. So. 
uh, even junior developers should have uh, a chance to give code reviews because that's that's the very uh, mm, that's very uh, educating as well. Uh, yeah, we should uh, do uh, review for uh, whole, all code that is uh, being pushed to the remote repository. So the best way is to work. Uh, uh, in branches and every branch uh, and every code that, that is pushed uh, uh, yeah, should be reviewed in a different branch before merging to, to master. Uh, what's more? Mm, uh, I think, yeah, I, I, I uh, mentioned uh, in the presentation title that uh, uh, Let's say positive attitude is is very important, and uh, yeah, uh, I will um, describe it uh, a little bit uh, further uh, later. But uh, um, this is yeah, this is very important that uh, we should not uh, point out uh, very small issues uh, in an aggressive way or something like that because. Uh, uh, we should focus on building uh, a team and uh, uh, yeah I mean uh, yeah let's talk about it later have a slide about that um, and yeah uh, when we are doing code reviews uh, it's easy to skip some things uh, and for example focus on syntax instead of uh, uh, semantic meaning of, of the code and uh, uh, I, I really recommend uh, leave syntax uh, checking for tools and hinters uh, uh, for example for tests and uh, things like uh, um, flakes or pep8 in, uh, in python world uh, and uh, as a code reviewer we should fo focus more on uh, logic, semantic and uh, things that cannot be che uh, checked by computers and tools uh, uh, in a very easy way so um, we should verify if, if the feature, for example, is uh, uh, um, coded correctly. Yeah. Okay, and uh, what we can advise for uh, submitters? So before even uh, reviewer pick up uh, the, uh, the uh, pull request for review, then as a submitter, I can take care that everything is. Uh, Okay, on my side, and I think that that's very important because uh, um, if we have some respect for uh, other team members, then we should take care that whatever we push to remote repository is uh, uh, the best quality we can provide. Because otherwise, uh, if we do, I know, obvious typos or, or things like that, that it can mean uh, uh, that. We don't yeah, respect others, we don't respect other, others' time, or I don't know, we don't like our job, something like that. So, uh, uh, what are advices for submitters? Um, I think that that's very, very important before even you create a commit, before even committing something in uh, your local repository, it's very important to just uh, uh, check your div uh, before that. Uh, you can find, I don't know, prints, commented code, or whatever, which is not important. Uh, or if we did, you know, very easy mistake, it's better to uh, be aware of that before committing. And once we committed the code, and once we are going to prepare a pull request, then we should have a checklist for, and uh, yeah, I will prepare uh, example che checklist uh, later on, but uh, for example, we should uh, Mm -hmm. take care that all tests uh, that were previously created uh, uh, pass uh, and, and things like that. Uh, yeah, as a submitters we should take care that uh, uh, the div and, and cone changes are short because uh, otherwise the pull, pull request uh, uh, mm, is going uh, to be uh, very difficult to review for reviewer and uh, it uh, increases the time to, to close this pull request, merge it, or whatever. So uh, the shorter that uh, shorter the pull request we create, the better. And uh, to 
uh, stick to this rule. It's very recommended to, for example, uh, keep refactors in uh, separate uh, branches or uh, separate pull requests. Uh, then we, uh, yeah, create uh, for features or bug fixes or other other things. Uh, and uh, there are other two parts very important uh, when we create pull requests. Uh, 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 we should take care that we uh, mm, put there also context of our changes, so we link everything that is needed to understand uh, for the reviewer uh, what this change fixes, for example. Yeah, so we should link uh, an issue number or related uh, other tasks or issues or uh, if there were some, I don't know, previous similar pull requests, we should uh, link them as well. So we should put as much context uh, 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 as it makes sense to, to understand uh, what the pull request is about. And uh, apart from that, we also should uh, uh, provide motivation behind our, behind our changes. So uh, even if we fix very, something very simple, for example, I don't know, uh, we change uh, uh, less than equal condition in if statement just to uh, uh, less uh, condition, then we should also motivate it, not, not just only push the commit uh, with one character change, but we should also put uh, in a commit message or in a pull request description uh, why this matters, why this fixes uh, the issue uh, and things like that. So, uh, because without this motivation, uh, reviewer will have very difficult job. Okay, this pull request is short, but uh, uh, the work that submitter already uh, did should be, to be honest, uh, recreated by the reviewer because there is no uh, clue why uh, why those uh, why this solution really works. So uh, yeah, again, respect your uh, team's member uh, team member time and uh, yeah, provide even one sentence. Why is that? Uh, and uh, yeah, there are some advices for reviewers. Again, it's good to have a checklist what uh, we are going to look at. Uh, it could be very long, but uh, the more practice you have, uh, uh, the better, because uh, mm, in different projects there are different uh, uh, di different um, workflows, let's say, and you need to pay attention to different details, but uh, I mean, the longer you work in a, in a given team, in a given project, the easier uh, it is to, to stick to a given checklist or, or uh, just proceed with uh, code reviews. Uh, again, uh, as a, when I was talking about submitters, we, we were trying to uh, uh, keep uh, changes short, but uh, if we are Reviewers, we need to take care that we do code reviews often, so uh, we have uh, we don't have to go through uh, tons of code, for example, every week. It's, it is better to uh, do I don't know one or two pull requests every day and uh, shorten the cycle of uh, closing and emerging pull requests. Uh, so in that case, we just limit. Uh, the work in progress and, and uh, mm, uh, it makes the whole process, uh, development process, uh, more fluent, I would say. Yeah, and uh, uh, if we are re reviewers, then it doesn't mean that we really have to find uh, issues in every pull request. It's sometimes just okay to say, uh, okay, everything looks good and, and uh, that's it because uh, there is no point to uh, enforce uh, any changes uh, in the code that actually is, uh, is good. Uh, so we don't have to be, I don't know, super strict about uh, everything just, just, uh, uh, just for reasons. Um, 
it is very good to price others for well done solutions. Uh, I mean, it's very motivating for submitters. Uh, and uh, even if everything is okay and everything works, uh, it's sometimes good to express that and and uh, put a comment. Oh, that's that's great job, and then merge it instead of just merging it because in in it gives motivation to our our colleagues. And uh, what's more, mm, uh, yeah, it, as I mentioned previously, it's very uh, important to give constructive uh, feedback in a clear way and in in a friendly way. way. Uh, thanks to that, we uh, we are becoming team players instead of uh, being jerk, for example. Uh, so. Uh, nobody is afraid to create pull requests, and that's very important. And nobody is afraid to pick up code reviews. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, that shorten uh, the delivery process and, and uh, uh, the workflow is fluent. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, let's make some fun sometimes, and then just put uh, some funny gifs or whatever. Uh, if the code is good or if the code is not that good, we can put uh, gifs like that. <laughs> it's good to have uh, some fun in our work. Uh, yeah, so how to give uh, friendly feedback? Mm. If everything is good, but, uh, uh, as I mentioned, it's good to praise and say great stuff, let's merge it or whatever, put some emojis and things like that. Uh, if something is uh, not working, for example, then we have many different ways to say that, but it's always good to mention that, uh, uh, for example, it looks good or everything goes in good direction, but something is wrong. Yeah. Uh, why is that? Because probably uh, other a developer or our colleague uh, put a lot of offer, uh, effort into uh, into uh, given pull request. Even if the changes or, or diff is short, uh, it doesn't mean there is uh, no effort. Sometimes, yeah, it takes ages to just f uh, find a very simple bug. And even if it's not perfect, it's good to uh, mention that yeah, it, it was actually a good job. Um, again, why is that? It motivates. Uh, sometimes, if we have a, a different point of view on a given, I don't know, uh, on a given um, practice, uh, then if we provide friendly feedback and uh, yeah, we praise for the solution, but uh, uh, we describe our point of view in that way, it is more much easier to persuade other team members to to our point of view. Uh, yeah, and thanks to friendly feedback, we build uh, a great culture and atmosphere in our team and, and the company. And if we show that uh, we care, because if we are friendly, that we rather care, care I would say, then we make others care. So uh, that's very important uh, to to build that culture. And uh, uh, at the end of my presentation, I put some uh, example checklist. Uh, it's not that long, but probably uh, it could be longer. Um, yeah, so for a submitter, we can check if uh, tests pass, the interpass, and things, uh, other our tools, uh, uh, yeah, just have green light. Uh, there are no missing uh, schema migration to database, there are no missing data migrations. Sometimes, for example, we create schema migration, but we forgot about uh, data migration. And there is, to be honest, really, it is really difficult for our tool, tool chain to complain, complain about that. So we can have it on our checklist to see, OK, if I did schema migration, then maybe I should do data migration as well. So uh, mm, it is good always to have it uh, on a checklist or uh, in your mind. Um, it is good to check if we have all translations. Uh, there are some tools that that can uh, detect it, but if we do not wrap uh, our text uh, around the get text, for example, uh, some string around the get text, then no tool could probably can detect it uh, if it is just I know uh, regular string or just very uh, important message for user. 
So again, it's good to go through strings in, in our changes and uh, make sure that uh, mm, everything uh, is covered by, by translations. Again, uh, what I mentioned previously, it's good to take care about context, motivation of our work and uh, uh, for example, if we tried many solutions or, or we even we thought about different solutions for a given issue, it is very important to mention it in a pull request description or, we can, or in a comment message and that could be very helpful for, for a reviewer uh, because otherwise if we don't uh, Mm, attach such message or such uh, description of our uh, approaches or possible approaches then uh, reviewer is not even uh, is not even uh, mm, let's say sure that we even thought about such approach approaches and maybe uh, reviewer will start thinking about that and will start experimenting with other approaching approaches and uh, we don't, again, this is what I mentioned, we should respect the time of others and we, if we already put some effort to check other approaches, why not to share it? We should share it and be sure that nobody else will uh, do the same work with, which we already did. And uh, there is example checklist for reviewer, so uh, we should take care that uh, new code or new changes are covered by tests. So, if submitter took care about uh, mm, tests that they, they already passed, uh, we should take care that there are any tests for, for those changes, for example, because if tests uh, pass, it doesn't mean that this new code is covered by tests. There are some tools for, for checking, uh, mm, for checking uh, uh, test coverage, for example, and, and uh, percentage of it, but uh, it's not that obvious how to do that correctly. So if you are reviewers, let's let's take about that, let's take care about that and uh, check at least if there is at least one test, for example, for a given piece of functionality. Uh, yeah, we can check if there is no commented out code uh, because um, there is no value probably in that uh, and. Uh, if by accident there is some uh, mm, commented code, then we can uh, mention it uh, and, and ask for deletion. Mm, we can again check uh, uh, mistakes in, in the code, very simple, like typos or uh, uh, not descriptive, descriptive variable names uh, or function names and, and things like that, because it's not very obvious for linter or uh, or other other tools to do that. And it is very important even to not just look at the code, but fetch this code and try it uh, yourself. Because uh, uh, in that case, if you are uh, anyway, ver if you are doing verification of the code, that you can ensure that everything works and uh, that uh, mm, features are implemented in a in a good way, uh, and check for example if, if there are no logical omission or errors and, and things like that. Uh, I, I think that's very important, it's uh, maybe part of the work that, that uh, I know QA department could do that, but uh, if we uh, take this approach to um, test software uh, closer to developers and, and by developers themselves, then probably uh, less bugs will be released on production. So that, that's a very good approach, I think. And uh, what's more, um, you can always check for more idiomatic ways of using some frameworks, libraries or language itself. Uh, and yeah, we can also check if there are some unhandled uh, edge cases, some uncaught uh, uh, exceptions or, or things like that. Yeah, and uh, that's all from me in this presentation. Thank you for your attention. I hope you uh, find this presentation interesting. <laughs>